Hi guys, how are you? If somebody don't know me, my name is Tyson Lucy. I have this YouTube YouTube channel and Instagram G about comics. I'm here and I'm very happy that I'm with a great comic book artist that I love his art, I love his comics. And finally, this interview works. So I'm here with Brian Box Brown. Mr. Brown, how are you? I'm so glad that you're here. How are you? Doing good, uh, hanging in there. But it was it was uh, starting to get nice and warm here in Philadelphia, and it uh, snowed yesterday, and uh, it's cold again. So <laughs> I'm waiting for the warm weather to come again. Well, in Brazil, it's super hot, so I, I have a, a little bit of jealousy of you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it literally was snowing yesterday. <laughs> I never see snow. I, really? Yeah. Oh wow! It never snowed in Brazil. No. Yeah. Just, oh. just on, on, on the, the on the down part, you know. Yeah, way uh, south, right? But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in the health, so in the health. Oh. So I, so here you don't know. But let's go to our interview to talk about comics. That is a thing that I love, and it's a thing that you do. So I have to start asking: Do you love comics? When I say it, I, I mean, um, do you love read comics? How is your relation with it? Oh well. Of course, yeah, I love reading comics. Um, I have a ridiculous amount of them. Here, I'm sitting in front of my bookshelf right now. Oh, actually. that's so nice. <laughs> uh, uh, for so I I started reading comics when I was uh, a little kid. I w would read uh, su you know superhero comics, X Men, Iron Man, nice. um, stuff like that, and then. Um, when I was in high school, I kind of got into um, uh, life in it's called Life in Hell. It was okay. um, the guy that uh, that created The Simpsons? You guys have The Simpsons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, so that guy had a comic strip uh, before The Simpsons, and uh, he and the collections of his strips called Life in Hell were so funny. I remember reading them when I was when I was like seventeen, and I like thought they were so funny so that was like a big uh influence on me too and then uh you know so i, I went through a period of time for, for a while where i was like buying every comic every book that like came out and mm -hmm. and reading them so much so much but um probably over the last five years or more slows down a lot i like having a lot less free time to read i wish i could had more time to read yeah. um so sometimes books will just like sit on my my table next to my bed for a while and i or i'll read like half of it and not, yeah. not finish it but uh but yeah i still i still probably buy you know yeah five I, to I, ten books a year or something like that yeah do you remember what war was your the last comic that you read Let's see. Uh, I have one sitting. What was the last thing I was reading? Not that long ago. I go. I go look. Sitting right now next to my bed. Uh, it was really good too. Actually, I didn't finish it, but I was really enjoying it. And tour by Box Brown Palace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Uh, it was a manga. Here it is. This book, The Man Without Talent. Oh yeah, it was pr super good. Um, I have like a bunch of stuff sitting over here. Um, uh, that I'll recommend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hot Dog Taste Test by Lisa Hanawalt. This one um, I I don't know. Lisa Hanawalt ended up um doing the character designs for. A show called Bojack Horseman on Netflix. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, Fonte Bukowski yeah. by uh, Noah Van Skyver. Also, yeah. highly recommend that. That's that's great. And and talking about comics, your I you you were talking about uh, the the comics that you read on when when you started to read comics, right? So uh, I like your work because it's your work is so alternative and you make documentary comics. Uh, so I couldn't start asking anything else when, when we talk about comics. 
have you watched Tiger King? Because this is a story I wish to see you <laughs> yeah. telling a comic book. <laughs> yes, I watched Tiger King. Uh, I actually was watching it recently. They made a like a, a, a like a TV show, okay. like a fictional TV show based on Tiger King. Oh, nice. which is funny. It's all like reenactment of the whole Tiger King, and I was watching that. That nice. was a, and then also Tiger King had a separate spinoff documentary about one of the other guy. You know, he was like a smaller yeah, character. Carol Baskin, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, so yeah, that was a crazy story. Uh, one thing I'm wa- there's a show that I'm watching now that's it's it's not a documentary but it's based on a true story, yeah. um, and it's about um, the L.A. Lakers. L.A. Lakers is like a basketball team in the U.S. Okay. and uh, Magic Johnson played for them. And when they they became like this really big sensation in the '80s, and they like made a, a movie about it, and it's really a uh, TV show, pretty good. Oh, nice. uh, and it was it was uh, it's interesting because it. it they they do a lot of stuff that I try that I do in comics that I I think they don't usually do in movies where okay you know uh, they'll take time out in in the in the narrative to explain something yeah like they'll you know uh, they'll be talking 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 then then they'll say blah 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 this guy and then yeah. all of a sudden it will be like boom cut out this guy was so and so and it was something I would do in a comic where you can go from the narrative to like a explanation of yeah. something quickly. Yeah. And what, what, what are your favorite documentaries of your life? It can be, oh. it can be a series. It can be comic mm -hmm. movie, everything. So, um, uh, so I really like Errol Morris's documentaries. Um, He did this. He did a series that you can find on YouTube. It's called um, First Person. Okay. Um, uh, uh, the director Errol Morris and he like interviews like people that aren't famous or well known, but have done something extraordinary. Yeah. Like one, he interviews a guy that landed a plane that was like malfunctioning, and he was like, it, he had to do all. He explains this whole thing, and he barely got through, and. He, it, it, everybody should have died but he was able to like land it and only a few people were injured and it's really interesting the way he does it he like invented a machine that it's like a camera so oh. a camera's shooting you but you're also is... looking right right into the camera and you okay. can see the other person's face oh. so you're like looking right into the camera but also looking right at the director that's very but, interesting and it, I, Yeah, he, he he. It's called the Interoscope or something like that. Okay, I, I don't know it, but I I will search for. It's uh, good. I yeah. highly recommend it. Okay, I I will search for. And I think I think that uh, what sets you apart from other artists who make documentary comics is that you tell lesser known stories. I mean, uh, Andre, for example, or the Patrice history, and mm -hmm. with it. Uh, you don't you don't tell Freddie Mercury's biography, for example. Why is that? Why why did you choose this way? I mean, why don't you tell great celebrity stories? Is this well, intentional, I, or you think that you uh, will make something like that someday? I could. I mean, my publishers always want me to to work on more well known figures, um, but I just I think that like I have this idea that. Um, every person is interesting and like it, even if i was to do like a big i mean i've done kind of celebrity books like i did a, a book about andy kaufman who is a celebrity in the u.s a comedian yeah. um but yeah it was like a i told the story that no one really told about him which was his wrestling story um i just find like weird things interesting and i think that like Even if I told a, a celebrity story, the most the most interesting thing about it would be like their personal emotional experience, yeah. which uh, everybody has in in their life. And um, so, if you can like extract that story out of someone, it doesn't matter if they're a celebrity yeah. or a or anybody, because it's interesting to hear about anyone's 
personal struggles. And that, that's interesting because uh, I have an impression that that's similar because the 80s was were filed with pop culture among so many subjects. Why did you choose to tell Tetris history? Uh, um, because it's an specific history. And, and also I have to say that I have a book plate that you made. For oh, nice. Brazil. And uh, <laughs> I just wanted to say it. So, I remember signing those. I signed so many. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah. So I grew up in the 80s. Um, and a lot of the stuff is are things that I was interested in when I was like a kid. And it stuck with me for a really long time. Uh, Tetris, for one thing, I played it obsessively, but not just... Not just that I played it obsessively, but like it was a very important cultural artifact kind of in my family yeah. because um so like when when i was a kid video games like only kids played video games and so if you could get your dad to play like mario brothers or something with you when you're a kid it was fun but they didn't really he didn't, wasn't super interested but t adults like to play tetris yeah. and i think that like so then after that i think like parents kind of like understood video games a little bit more yeah and uh and so like we all played it and we like bonded over like all of my whole family played my dad and my mom and my my grandmother and like <laughs> all these people I, I remember my my grandma had a game boy so she could play tetris yeah. Yeah. and so like i think it was like a big cultural touchstone for people of my generation um And, and same thing with like Andre the Giant. It was like a big um, thing for me when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and, and it just stuck with me. And so yeah. like a lot of my books kind of like are about like those things. Because, you know, it's like when you see things when you're a kid, you, you see them one way. Yeah. And then when you're adults, you can look back on them. And see them a different way. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's true. I, I'm not adult yet. <laughs> But yeah, I understand because when I was nine, for example, I I saw Batman as a superhero. But today, I saw him as a rich man who who punch poor people. So it's a really <laughs> it's a little bit strange. Yes, so, that's true. Yes. So and and when you're producing a story and you find out uh, something you would never imagine, do you like to use it? this as a plot twist on history you know I, i don't know if i i could say right my my question but when when you're you're reading for example the history of tetris you're searching about and you see that when when the people were producing tetris some people died right so yeah do you use do you use this on your on your histories as an and plot twist or you use As in so, so that one specifically, this that was gonna, I was gonna mention that, um, because that was I, I was like shocked by that because that's not something I was expecting this to find yeah. the story. I hadn't yeah. had that like mapped out, but ultimately I felt like it had to be in the story because it was just too important of a thing and too, it was too uh, relevant to the story yeah. for it not to be included and too strange, um. And then the other reason after I did decide to include it, I was thinking about how it was actually really important to the story because yeah. um, the, the, the kind of the, the, what it showed was the, the lengths to which, you know, these people are coming from, from Russia where there was no capitalism and they came to the U S and, you look at Alexi had this like uh, eventually this amazing success and uh, prosperousness. And then his partner, you know, ended up not doing so well and, and ended up, you know, killing himself and his family. And I just kind of saw it as like these two opposite extremes of, of what could happen yeah. in a capitalist society. Yeah. Um, and so I thought it was important to leave it in there. It was difficult to write about. I don't usually focus on, you know, that type, those morbid yeah. uh, subjects like that, but, yeah, yeah. you know, I thought it was important.
Yeah, uh, that, that's very interesting. And talking about, and, and another comic book that you, that you made, and it's the last question, we can't talk about, we, we couldn't finish it, talk, don't talking about wheat, right? So I, I imagine that cannabis was the comic book that required um, the most research And because because the history of weed it's obviously yeah. much older than Andre the Giant or Tetris mm -hmm. itself. Why you why you were making this comic? There was something that you discovered and you were very surprised at the story or or, or of the yeah, little so, plant and yeah no definitely um, it was difficult to, that was very difficult to research because. First of all, go, the history is so long, and I really, yeah. after writing it, feel like I missed some stuff. Like I wish I could go back and revise it because yeah. in the book we talk about where cannabis comes from, and uh, we talk about it coming to North America, um, you know, on a ship. And really, I think cannabis actually was already here, yeah, because yeah. it had it's it's the history of it is actually so much older. I thought and even too. that, yeah. yeah, it's even even older than that, like ancient, ancient, because it, it it enters the historical record ten or ten thousand years ago. So, <laughs> I th think it would have made it to North America before five hundred years ago. Yeah, and uh, so I wish I could go back and redo that that part of it. Um, but also the history, the documentation for that is iffy because it was a taboo subject for so long yeah so but really the reason i made that book is because um we're legalizing there's a lot of legalization happening now uh, in the u.s and um i don't think people really understand like how how um like you know bad the law actually was and how um okay. you know you know how bad it was for people And the reason why it became illegal in the first place was yes. there was no really basis behind it besides like this one guy yes. wanted to do it. That, that's crazy, right? How they don't legalize it because because I think it's I think no, it, it's it's better than weed is better than uh, alcohol or or, or everything, yeah. beer. Less and, dangerous, less definitely. Dangerous, yeah, yeah. Cigarettes. Um, Yeah, and you, and I think that it's also, you know, hopefully in the next few years, next 10 years, we'll see that more of the medical side of what's possible and the benefits there too. Because I think there's yeah, a lot of benefits yeah. for um, individuals and yeah. just everyday people generally. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's very crazy. But uh, Mr. Brown... Thank you so much for, for coming to this interview. I have to say, when, when for people who don't know you, can you say your social medias to people following oh, sure. you? Yeah, uh, I'm, if you, I'm mostly active on Twitter and Instagram. And on both of those places, I am at Box Brown. So, okay. guys, thank you so much for watching. Mr. Brown, thank you for coming. And see you, people.